Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're discussing issues that I personally wrestle with with regard to the faith. And last time, we concluded that the promises of Jesus for heavenly happiness involve the fulfillment of all human desires for those who reach heaven. So, the only other important thing is, how do you get there? Yes, we could go through a list, faith in God, faithfulness towards God through obedience to the Ten Commandments, participation in the sacraments, participation in the works of mercy, you know the drill. However, St. Paul sums up the commandments in a simpler way. Now the end of the commandment is charity, from a pure heart and a good conscience and an unfeigned faith. 1. Timothy 1. five. The actual, specific actions that we need to take are important, but let's look at what each of these things means. There are four things mentioned here. Charity, a pure heart, a good conscience, and an unfeigned faith. Number one, charity. We've been discussing the nature of charity as far back as episode 48 of Clean Cut. Check the video description for the episode list, and we ultimately concluded that charity is not an emotion, but a decision to give to others, to make sacrifices in order to benefit others. That's what Christian charity is all about. Even the willingness to give your life for another is charity in the Christian sense. We can do good things to benefit even our enemies without assisting them in their evil doing. Show special charity to those who can't support themselves, and commit ourselves to the sacrifices involved in obeying the law of God in this life. All of this falls under the heading of Christian charity. Number two, a pure heart. In episode 378, we learned that when the Bible says heart, what it means is mind, the place where the thoughts take place. So when St. Paul refers to a pure heart, this means thoughts and decisions that are free from vice and oriented towards God and heaven. Number three, a good conscience. While a pure heart is all about using self-control and willpower to banish vice from our thoughts, a good conscience is about knowing what to do and what to banish. A good conscience is gained and must be gained by learning. What's referred to in the church as forming your conscience. You study faith and morals to learn what the right thing to do is, and in some cases, why. This improves the quality of your conscience, makes it keener and more able to perform its intended function. This is what it means to have a good conscience. Number four, an unfeigned faith. Faith, in this context, refers to both belief in God and faithfulness to God. Unfeigned means genuine or not pretend. This means two things. First, it means that we must really believe in God and the afterlife. Just pretending to believe in it isn't enough because depending on whether you really believe or not, your choices will be very different. For instance, if you're a priest and you don't really believe in God or the afterlife, you won't be as likely to be concerned with the eternal salvation of your parishioners. Your motives, in fact, will probably center more around making people happy, not giving offense, and keeping the parish running in an administrative sense. This means you'll be more likely to behave how the false prophets behaved in the Old Testament, telling the kings and the people what they wanted to hear so that you can make friends and therefore money. However, as St. James said, Adulterers, know you not that the friendship of this world is the enemy of God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of this world becometh an enemy of God. James 4.4 4. A person with no faith will have worldly motives and will focus more on trying to prevent conflict and negative feelings by telling people they're all right and they don't need to repent, depriving those very people of the information they need to work towards salvation. Not only that, but those who take seriously the idea that penitence and resistance to the spirit of the age aren't needed tend to start questioning, logically, what they need the church for to begin with in that case. As a result, paradoxically, while people may seem less offended by this kind of treatment, this kind of feel-good Christianity tends to drive its members away and cause churches and parishes to fail. On the other hand, a priest with a genuine faith will make more enemies because he'll be more willing to tell people the truth about what's a sin and what isn't. That can be offensive to people who don't want to know unpopular truths. But it also reinforces the belief that you do need the church, and on top of that, when you believe something strongly enough to take an unpopular stand on it, People who are looking for God's truth tend to gravitate in your direction. 
The issue of faithfulness is the same. It's not enough to only pretend to be doing the will of God. You actually have to obey the commandments of God and really try to do his will, because those who don't tend to produce a very different kind of results. All four of these things, charity, a pure mind, a well-formed conscience, and a genuine faith and faithfulness to God, encompass together everything that God asks of us, that we willingly sacrifice for others, seek to banish evil and vice from our lives, according to a sincere attempt to learn the difference between right and wrong, and driven by an authentic faith in Jesus and his holy church. That is the path to heaven. Next, is tradition important in the faith? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.